Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the very important and very high yield topic of DNA replication. This is something you will be tested on multiple times throughout your medical career. This is something you cannot move forward without knowing really well. It is a very, very important topic and it is highly tested at all stages of medical education. So with that being said, we're going to go and start talking about DNA replication. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. It allows us to continue making these educational lectures completely free so that you don't have to pay a single dime because we know you're going in debt. So we want to help you out there. With that being said, let's dive right in and let's do a quick review of replication. Replication occurs in the interphase of the cell cycle. It's happening before the cell cycle actually begins because you need to replicate DNA before you can move forward and replicate the or split the cell up, right? Makes, makes sense. Now, it's going to involve a lot of protein and enzymes. This is a very, very complicated process. Okay, you need to understand that. And the way we are going to explain it to you right now is even going to be simplified than what's actually happening. Again, this is just for your ex you know, uh, exam purposes. This is just so you have an understanding of what's going on so you, that you can answer all of your exam questions. But the truth is the reality of how DNA replication occurs is extremely, extremely complicated. It's not this simple. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind as we progress with this topic. DNA replication is semi-conservative and it involves both the continuous and discontinuous strands called the Okazaki fragments. If you look right here in this photo, you can see these strands are not continuous. They're not bound like this strand right here. These are your Okazaki fragments. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. And then finally, it is always occurring in the five prime to three prime direction. If you look right here, this is the five prime end. Okay, and this will be the three prime end. Same thing with this. This is the five prime end and this is the three prime end. All right, five prime, three prime. That means, oh, three prime. That means on top of the actual strand, the lagging strand, the one that is being replicated off of, this is going to be the five prime and this is all the way up here is the three prime, five prime. And then this means this section is the three prime. It gets very confusing. You just need to make sure you understand that it's always going in the five prime to three prime direction. So when it comes to DNA replication in uh, in eukaryotic cells, we have multiple origins of replications. And an origin of replication is exactly what it sounds like. It's where the replication first begins. Now in this image, we're not really showing it, but the origin of replication will be somewhere way back there because this is the leading strand and it's going this way, right? It's going to the three prime portion. It's going in its three prime portion, but that means that the origin started somewhere upstream. Now, in eukaryotic cells, we have multiple origins. In prokaryotic cells like bacteria, you're going to have a single origin of replication. And you're also going to see that at this origin of replication for both prokaryotics and eukaryotic cells, you're going to have a lot of adenine and thymine rich sequences. It's going to be a lot of these, uh, these bonds between these two nucleotides. And these regions are called uh, the Tata blocks. You can also see these in the promoter regions. Now, one thing to remember is that the promoter region will not be directly close to the origin of replication. In terms of the actual DNA sequence, it might be hundreds or, or thousands of base pairs away. But you got to remember that DNA is not just linear, it is also coiled. So if it's going like this and like this, if you need to start replication right here, you could have a promoter sequence that's right here. And it might be touching because keep in mind, this is still a 3D structure. I showed this in 2D, but in 3D, this might be touching right next to each other. So because it is in close proximity, although it is really far in terms of base pairs, it is still considered a promoter region because this region can influence this origin of replication. Very, very important concept of the promoter region. You should commit to the back of your memory from now on. All right, so there are three main stages to DNA replication. The first stage is the initiation stage. Then you're gonna go on to the elongation stage. And finally, we're gonna to go to the termination, termination stage. At each stage, you have very specific enzymes that are gonna function and that are gonna play a very important role in replicating DNA. So let's dive right in. Let's talk about the first stage, the initiation stage. Now, during this stage, you are going to be getting your uh, DNA ready to be replicated. 
What does that entail? Well, first of all, our DNA naturally sits in a combined jointed double helix structure like the one I'm drawing right here, right? This is one strand, this is the other strand, and these strands are connected via base pairs of nitrogenous bases, okay? Now, we essentially need to break this structure up. So the way you are going to do this is by separating these two strands with the help of a molecule or a, a, of a enzyme called helicase. Very important enzyme, very important because you need to know this enzyme. Helicase actually unwinds the DNA template at the replication fork. Helicase is playing a very important part. It is unwinding or it is, as people like to say, it is having or making it in cutting it in half. Um, and it is opening up this, this structure so that we can get proteins inside of it for the replication to begin. This molecule right here is helicase. It is opening up this portion. And this is the replication fork. The replication fork is essentially a Y-shaped region, right? Because you're going to split this portion up like this. It is a Y-shaped region of the uh, DNA where the leading strand, which is the continuous uh, continuously replicating strand and the lagging strand, which is going on the opposite direction. It is not continuous. It is broken up are being replicated from. Okay. This is where the, all the replication essentially is starting after the origin. So the lagging strand begins here and the leading strand is going towards this replication fork. And helicase is very important because it is a very, very uh, a tough thing it's doing, right? It's breaking up these very strong bonds. How do you think it's breaking it up? Well, it's using our friend ATP. Helicase uses ATP hydrolysis to open up the DNA helix. This is a very taxing process. Okay. Now, the fact that you're opening up these bonds means you are essentially breaking bonds. So what happens when you are opening up these, you know, bonds? What happens upstream or I guess you could say downstream, but what happens all the way down? What happens further than the replication fork? Well, think of it this way. Let's say you have a braid together of two uh, wires or two threads. When you pull them apart, that pulling uh, motion is going to put a lot of essentially tension beyond the replication fork or beyond where you're splitting the wire, right? So if you've ever split um, two strings and you pull them apart, you'll see it puts a lot of tension. And then if you keep doing it all the way, the end of it will scrunch up and will get really tight. You don't want that happening to your DNA because if you are putting a lot of tension over here as the helicase is breaking up the, these bonds right here at the replication fork, you will cause damage to your DNA. Luckily, in our bodies, we have developed a way to prevent that. The opening of the DNA helix actually causes supercoiling downstream right here. You don't want that to happen. That is very dangerous, okay? So we have a molecule in our body, in the cells, called DNA topoisomerase. DNA topoisomerase is going to prevent the supercoiling and it is going to undo the supercoiling or overwinding of the DNA. Very, very important. The way it does this is by creating single or double-stranded DNA breaks um, and by doing that, it is able to release that tension and allow helicase to continue at the same time. All right. And then it also reduces the uh, additional stress that's placed upon the helix as replication proceeds. So DNA topoisomerase, high yield. Okay. Very, very freaking high yield. Okay, so now that we've discussed uh, helicase and uh, we're starting to talk about DNA topoisomers, I want to focus here because this topic, this molecule, is a very important molecule. You see, DNA topoisomerase can actually be targeted, and we can target this drug in order to prevent DNA replication, especially in pathologic conditions like uh, an infection or even sometimes in cancer, right? When you have pathologic DNA replication happening, either of a bacteria cell that's inside the body or of a cancer cell that's continuously replicating, we want to stop that. One way we can do that is by attacking these molecules, the topoisomerase molecules. If you attack these topoisomerase molecules, the supercoiling cannot be undone, and then the DNA will get damaged downstream and replication can't occur properly. So the there are a few you need to know. These are not super high yield. We will talk about them later too, but I just want to mention them so that they're in the back of your mind as you progress in terms of your understanding. The first one is uh, Ironotecan or the TCANs, topo 
This is gonna target eukaryotic topo isomerase one, and then etoposide and tenoposide actually target eukaryotic uh, topo isomerase two. Then you also have a very high yield drug that I think you should commit to memory right now before you move forward because this is something you will either use in the clinical setting a lot or you will be tested on it a lot. And those are fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones are drugs, antibiotic drugs, that actually target prokaryotic topoisomerase 2, aka DNA gyrus, and 4. So this is a very high yield drug you need to remember. All right, and the way it functions is by dis, uh, is essentially by halting DNA replication. This is not a bactericidal; it is a bacteriostatic medication because it is stopping the replication, but it's not really killing the cell itself. So. That is topoisomerase, and that completes the stage one, which is DNA, uh, essentially initiation of DNA replication. Now let's move on to DNA elongation. DNA elongation starts after you have opened up this double helix. And the first thing you need to do is actually start the process of getting uh, DNA replicated. And we use a molecule called primase. Primase will bind to the DNA and it's going to make an RNA primer. So in order for DNA to replicate, we first have to put a little bit of RNA on the DNA. That is important because the RNA will allow a very important molecule, very important molecule called DNA polymerase. Okay, this is a high yield molecule you need to remember. And I'll tell you why I didn't bold this in a second. But this is a very important molecule. It will the the RNA primer will allow DNA polymerase to bind to it. And once it binds to it, you can start the synthesis of the uh, DNA by adding more and more nucleotides, as you can see right here. This is the DNA polymerase we're talking about. Somewhere downstream, or yeah, somewhere back there, we had an RNA primer added that allowed this molecule DNA polymerase to bind to it. All right, so when it binds to it, it is able to take these free floating nucleotides that are in the nucleus and it's able to conjoin them to their complementary base pair. And that's how you make the uh, DNA as it is progressing. Now, I said that this is a very important molecule, but I didn't bold it. The reason why I didn't bold it is because you need to know about a very specific molecule. You see, DNA polymerases are different in eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. In prokaryotic cells, you have a very important, well, you don't, but prokaryotic cells have a very important molecule for DNA polymerase called DNA polymerase 3. This is something you need to know, okay? You need to understand this because DNA polymerase 3 functions as the main DNA polymerase in prokaryotic cells. In eukaryotic cells, it's way more complicated. You have three other polymerases that are present that make a, that essentially function to allow us as humans to be able to replicate our uh, a DNA. So we're not going to go into the human portion yet just because it gets so complicated. It is not that simple and it's not going to yield you a lot of information, a lot of points on your exam. But the prokaryotic version is very important because you need to understand how this, this specific polymerase functions. DNA polymerase 3 is in prokaryotics only, but it elongates the leading strand uh, in the three prime end, it adds the the deoxynucleic acids or deoxynucleotides in the three prime end. So that means in the three prime end, DNA polymerase is going from the the typical five prime to three prime portion. Remember earlier we said that DNA replicates always from five prime to three prime. Well, that's what's happening here, but it also elongates on the lagging strand. And on the lagging strand, it's going from the three prime to the five prime for the replication process. Well, the way you need to understand this is that it's going from five prime to three prime in the context or in the, um, I guess you could say, in regards to the original DNA strand, right? The original DNA strand that is on the lagging strand is being read uh, three prime to five prime. When DNA polymerase binds to it, it is replicating three prime to five prime, but it is adding molecules and it is creating the, uh, the daughter strand in a five prime to three prime uh, portion still. 
I need you to understand that because this can get very confusing. It is always going from five prime to three prime, okay? But in the lagging strand, it's going from three prime to five prime. That's not the only important thing though. It also contains a very, very important activity. It has the ability to proofread and it contains that in the three prime to five prime exonucleus activity. It is essentially proofreading just to make sure that it is not the, the process of replication is not adding improper nucleotides so that there aren't any strand breaks or issues like that. So when we simplify it, DNA polymerase has two abilities. Number one, it has the ability to synthesize DNA in the five prime to three prime direction. And then it has the ability to proofread backwards in the three prime to five prime direction. Make sure you understand all of this. DNA polymerase has the ability to go through five prime to three prime synthesis of replication, uh, synthesis of DNA, and five, uh, three prime to five prime proofreading ability. Very, very important. Okay, so now that we've talked about DNA polymerase, now that I have hammered this thing right here, which is, I'm gonna write it just so you guys don't forget. This is high yield AF. Okay, this is high yield. Now that we have gone through this, let's go back to uh, the elongation stage. So we talked about how DNA polymerase is actually binding here. We talked about the RNA primer and we talked about how we are now adding nucleotides. So you might be wondering what happens to the RNA primer? Do we have RNA in our DNA when it gets replicated? The answer is no, you do not. And the reason why we do not is because the RNA primer, the RNA primer is removed and replaced with DNA. In prokaryotes, this is done via a molecule called DNA polymerase 1. This is a pretty important molecule, just so you should have this in the back of your mind. I want to mention it so that I do my due diligence and I tell you about it. If you do not remember this, it's okay, but I recommend you kind of, you know, remember the bolded stuff I'm adding. And then in eukaryotes, this process of removing the RNA primer is done via RNase H. So DNA polymerase 1, this molecule right here, is very important. It functions very similar to DNA polymerase three, all right? But it also has the ability to remove the five prime to three prime RNA primer. So it has the ability to remove the five prime to three prime primer. What type of activity is that? That is the activity called exonuclease activity. Do you remember another word for exonucleus activity? Nuclease. This is an A. There you go. Nuclease activity, aka proofreading. So it has the ability to proofread in the five prime to three prime direction. And it also has the same ability as DNA polymerase three, which is able to proofread in the three prime to five prime direction. So DNA polymerase one is able to proofread in both directions. It can proofread going forwards and backwards. That's why I was saying that DNA polymerase one is pretty important. That's why I was saying you should try to commit this to your memory. Okay, so now that we've gone through the elongation stage and that's how, uh, now that we've discussed how uh, DNA replication essentially occurs during the elongation stage, we need to talk about how DNA stops. How does DNA replication stop? Well, that is through the last stage called the termination stage. In this termination stage, essentially the DNA will go all the way from where it began all the way to the end and then it will reach the end. The DNA polymerase will then detach from the DNA. Now you might be wondering what's happening to these lagging seg segments? What are happening to the Okazaki fragments, right? Because they're not completely joined to each other. Well, those lagging segments will have to be joined and those joined, uh, those segments will be combined via an enzyme called a DNA ligase. DNA ligase will essentially combine the Okazaki fragments to each other. That happens towards the very end, all right? And that's pretty much all that's happening in prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, we have an additional step, and this is a very high yield step. This is something you need to know and you need to remember because it has a lot of roles in the human body. It plays a lot of roles in the uh, process of disease progression. In eukaryotes, we add an additional set of nucleotides, and those sets of nucleotides are called 
telomeres. Telomeres are added by a molecule, by an enzyme called telomerase. So telomerase is an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase that's going to add DNA to the three prime end of the chromosome, to the very end of the chromosome. And the type of uh, sequence it adds is very, very specific. It's always going to be this TTA, GGGGG segment, okay? So how do I always remember it? Because you might be given a portion or you might be given the um, essentially the genetic code in a exam question and you have to be able to remember this sequence and this is the sequence you got to look out for. Well, I always remember that telomerase is going to tag the end of the chromosome. It tags uh, the end of the chromosome with the uh, with some um, some essentially base pairs of uh, T T A G G G. Okay. That's how I always remembered it. Why do we need this? You see, in eukaryotes, the process of DNA replication is very, very important. And it's very important because we have such complex physiology, such complex cellular mechanisms happening across our body. And we want to avoid losing genetic material. So we add telomeres to avoid loss of this genetic material. And then you can see that telomeres play a very important role, not just in aging, because as you age, your telomeres will shorten, but they also play an important role in cancer development. Often in cancer cells, telomerase is dysregulated. It's not functioning properly, and it can lead to unlimited replication. That's why this is such a high yield topic because it has human real life uh, implications. If your telomerase doesn't fracture, uh, um, if your telomerase does not function properly, and if it does not add proper telomeres to the ends of your chromosomes, you can get cancer. Very, very important. So with that being said, we've gone through the essentially what you need to know for DNA replication. We discussed stage one, which is initiation, where you have uh, essentially DNA uh, helicase, functioning and DNA topoisomerase. We discussed topoisomerase a little bit deeper and talked about a medication called fluoroquinolones, which affect the prokaryotic topoisomerase uh, uh, mechanisms. And then we talked about the elongation stage where we have primase that will add a RNA primer, DNA polymerase will bind to that primer and start replicating DNA. And then we also talked about DNA polymerase three, which is only found in prokaryotes. And then we talked about the uh, polymerase one, which is gonna remove the RNA primer and add DNA in prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, remember it's called RNase H. And then DNA termination or replication termination occurs when the uh, essentially the whole DNA molecule is replicated. The Okazaki fragments are bound together with DNA ligase and in eukary eukaryotic cells, telomerase will add telomeres to the ends of the DNA. That's a lot. So I highly recommend you take your time with this stuff. You make sure you understand every bit of it because it is a tough topic and it is something you need to know very, very well. If you found this helpful and you found this useful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. It allows us to continue making these educational lectures completely free so that you don't have to go deeper into debt as you go through your medical education. As always, if you want to learn more, if you want to see more completely free educational videos or get more resources, go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you'll find a bunch more educational lectures free of charge. Thank you.